Cindy Stumpo is a general contractor for 25 years and counting. I'm paying premium price. I expect premium products. Stumpo has been building houses and shattering stereotypes. The bad guy's here. It's up to the customer. I want a phone call back. I'm pretty upset. The customer is always right. Actually, I'm more than pretty upset. Cindy Stumpo is tough as nails. Welcome to City Stumpo, Tough as Nails on WBZ News Radio 1030. And of course, I'm here with my lovely daughter, Samantha. How are you, Sammy? Hi, Mom. How are you? You having a good week? I'm having a great week. I know you are. Things are moving. You're selling and grooving. Okay, my guest tonight, I have Andrew Franklin and Denise Leonard. And I cannot screw up that last name because that's my maiden name. So there we go. Denise Leonard. Love that name. Okay, so Andy. Andy's been with Village Bank for almost two decades. He's a senior vice president of lending and started Village Bank as a commercial lender. And I've been with Andy for that long a time. That's right. Okay. Denise Leonard is, I love that name, <laughs> is vice pre I should have kept my main name. <laughs> Denise Leonard is vice president of residential lending at Village Bank. So, welcome guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for having us. Thank okay. you. So tonight's topic, we, we kind of like give a name to our show. And tonight's topic, Trisha came up with, are we in a bubble? But we're not. We're going to talk more than are we just in a bubble. We're going to talk about... For all you people that don't know who Trisha is, she's one of our producers. Okay, Trisha's a producer. I'm assuming everybody knows who everybody is. I'll plug is. her. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about everything. But we're, the, the name, the theme will be, are we in a bubble? Okay? Because... A real estate bubble? Yeah, a real estate bubble. Okay, so I've got questions. So, Denise, Andy, I'm not going to call Andy, Andrew, because I call him Andy. <laughs> Can I call you Andy? Yeah, Andy's fine. <laughs> okay. First question. Both opinions. Are we in a real estate bubble? Andy. That is a great question, Cindy. I wish I could give you a definitive answer on that. Um, there's a lot of people that are trying to determine whether we're in a real estate bubble uh, locally as well as nationally. Um, as you know, the kind of standard definition of a bubble is oversupply and under demand. So the biggest question is, are there too many houses out there right now for the demand? Um, and I guess it depends on where you look. Um, it's all very local, I think. You know, nationally, there's certain certain um, cities that have an oversupply of uh, real estate, but then you look more locally in Massachusetts, uh, places like Newton, where I happen to work, um, there's still very strong demand. So, right. again, I think it's going to depend tremendously on where you're looking. Okay. Denise? I agree with what Andy said. I mean, it, it, it certainly does depend on where you are. And it, for us... The reason why the values have stayed so high is because the demand is there. There's just not enough inventory of what people are looking for. When that changes, when it shifts, because if there's a, an increase in rates, that will slow down the buying, which will increase the supply, yeah. but it will take a while to get there. Right, and we're, we're going to touch upon that. Okay, what causes a real estate bubble to crash? Like what happened? Let's talk right. about the crash, the, the, the last crash was 06. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then everybody was m the Monday morning quarterbacks. We crash because this, 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 this. But nobody knew why we were crashing. I have a saying. There's like this big microphone that says, everybody go buy houses now. Right? And then there's this big microphone that goes out to the whole country. Stop buying houses. Mm -hmm. and, and I say this, and I really mean it, because my ex-husband was in the car business. And at the last week of every month, Everybody would come out and buy cars, right. and then no one buy cars again. And then the next month, and then it could be the second week of that month. Everybody come out and buy cars. It was like one week it took to make your whole business. So we didn't see it coming. Is that correct? Some people, very few people saw it coming. I think for me there's a, there's a number of reasons. Everybody's looking for one reason that there was a, a bubble, uh, that last crash that started in 2007. But it's really the causes were uh, – there were many causes of it. Um, All to be seen after the fact. Yeah. Again, there were a handful of people who saw it, who predicted it and saw it coming. But I think, the, for me, the, the the number one reasons you had uh, you had banks that were incentivized just to make loans and generate commission income. So they were. Are we not doing that now? No. So there are no banks doing that right now. No, no mortgage companies doing that. Not the extent that they were in 2007. So. But that behavior is still going on somewhere. Still still goes on, correct. So mm -hmm. it's kind of multifaceted, Cindy, because it depends on what bank you're dealing with. A community bank like the Village Bank, where we hold all our loans in our, on our portfolio so we don't sell the loans, and we, that's true for the last 100 years, 
in 2007, we weren't incentivized to generate a bad loan to somebody who couldn't afford to pay the mortgage, and because we were just Gonna they were just selling it off. it off, package and sell it off, and we got a fee. I'm saying banks that right. were doing this were getting a fee, so they didn't really care if the borrower could repay or not. They were just selling the loan off downstream. And they were shipping them off as packages. So you Pack- had A credit, B credit, C credit, D right. credit. You bought the whole package, and here you go. So again, right. there's a lot of a lot of blame to go around. So you had the people originating were getting paid. They didn't care about the credit quality because they didn't have to worry about keeping the loan on their own books. You had the radio okay. agencies, who the radio agencies who were supposed to do their job and rate those securities, and they weren't doing a good job of that. You had the regulators who thought that everybody should own a mortgage. That was, I mean, sort of everybody should own a house. So it was a big push nationally for everybody to be a, a homeowner. So you had that going on. You had. Um, but a lot of things you're saying to me right now is what we're living through again. Yeah. So. Well, a couple of things have changed. Mm-hmm. The underwriting has become more stringent. The okay, give me an example. We've gone back to when. I first started in the business, it was, you know, you had to have ratios, your your front end and back end ratios, 28, 36, Let, no, okay. nothing more. You know what, let's stay with that because yep. I was going to come up with this question. When a bank, when you go into a bank, and let's talk to uh, an end user, new person looking yep. for a home, Samantha's age, 31, what do they have to do to qualify? My, my father once said to me that you had to be able to pay your mortgage with one week's paycheck. That's what it was like in the 70s. Yep. Okay, one week you had to cover your overhead to be able to buy a home. Right. Well, we know that can't be possible now. It's not one week of somebody's paycheck. Right. It's a third it's of a, a th- month. Okay, so here. Right. 30% okay. of your gross income is what should be your housing ideally. ratio. Uh, yeah, ideally. Right. right. Okay, so you're saying it's a third of a person's gross income that determines the amount lent. As in one person or like jewels and family? No, the household household. Okay. household. So if you have a co-borrower, mm-hmm. right, they would include that. So. And right. how much would you have a new homeowner or anybody put down? 20% at least. So 20. Yes. Yeah. And are there times that you push for 30? Yes, it depends sometimes for second homes. Like if you're buying a second home somewhere, you might want a larger down payment because those tend to be a little more risky because you stop paying on your second home before your primary but home. Th- but just going back to the original um, So we wanted to get that formula out there. We did get that formula so people understand there is a formula to being approved on a mortgage. Yes. Right. Okay. But, right. but it's two it's two parts. That's the front end of the formula. The back end is even if you have the, the front end 30%, all of your other debt we have to take into consideration and add that to that number and that combined can only go up to ideally 43 percent so here we go so car a person loans. has car loans yep. they've got credit card debt mm-hmm. so exactly. the best advice i can give people is pay down the credit cards before you start applying for a mortgage yes bring up your credit score yes and also get some of that debt out of the way yes take ten thousand pay it down because it's only going to take away from their qualifications when they come into the bank with true. you right exactly. so true that's the back side the, the difficulty is though do you save for the down payment? Or do you pay off the debt? And for a lot of people, they don't have the savings ability or it's slow, it's harder to save, so they don't necessarily have that. I have the answer. Tear up your credit cards. Yeah, okay? exactly. My father always Stop. said to me, My you, did, can't, you can't, you can't pay, pay it for today, it in cash. You can't pay it tomorrow. Correct. Okay? That's the way we're all brought up. Right. Yes. It is. But these kids today, it's charge, 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 charge. And then... Right. I'll worry about how I'm going to pay for it when. Right. And let's just pay the interest and the interest and the interest and never get it down. I don't allow my kids to have credit cards. I really don't. No, she'll tell you. Like, mm-hmm. no, like here's, take one. Yes. And that's oh. it for emergencies. And if she saw how many credit cards I rip up that come through the mail, it, you, you, right. she would be like, oh, give me that one. Give me this one. <laughs> no, there's the nothing same, good that's going to come out. My kids all, if they have a credit card, they pay it off at the end of the month. If you can't. Pay, the pay it off at the end of the month and don't, don't right. charge Right, so, so that's, you know, nothing but to teach people. This Denise said the, the challenge, particularly in the marketplace that we're in uh, around Boston, is the down payment because the prices of housing has got, have gone yeah. up so high mm-hmm. in order to put down 20%. Now, there are, other, Wait, there are first time Hold home. that thought. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to go off to break. I'm Cindy Stemple, and this is Tough as Nails on WBZ News Radio 1030. Okay. 
And I'm Cindy Stumpo on WBZ News Radio 1030. And I'm here with Samantha, Andrew Franklin, and Denise Leonard from Village Bank. Tonight's topic, are we in a bubble? Okay, so we just explained the last crash. Now let's all play like we have a crystal ball because well, if we could call this, hold on, Sammy. If we could call this, we wouldn't be building and you wouldn't be bankers and we'd be billionaires looking right. into our crystal exactly. ball, right? Exactly. So at this point, I'm going to ask Denise as a mom first. If your child's out there, if you're, you're a young adult, whatever, we call them children until they're like 50, mm-hmm. but whatever, um, was out buying a house right now, what would be your advice? <laughs> buy, don't buy right now? She's actually just bought a house. She'll be closing at the end of the month. Okay. <laughs> and you know the market's inflated a bit. Yes. And you're not afraid for her. How old is she? 31. Okay, same as Sammy. Yes. So you're not afraid that in two pregnant years... Too. Yes. And pregnant. <laughs> All right, so she needs a house. She needs a house. <laughs> but she's going to stay there for a long time. Right. Because she has started a family. She is. Okay. Right. So if you're going out 20 years and 10 years and 15 years, we're going to see two more market swings by then. Mm-hmm. So it really doesn't matter. The person that does have to be concerned is, to me, the person that's coming for two, three years and maybe might move on, relocate, or Samantha wants to buy in the seaport area. And then all of a sudden, six months from now, she falls in love and she gets married and has a baby. And two years, she falls to that down market. Right. Well, she's going to lose on that, but then she'll gain on the other. Into your opinion. Yeah, so uh, if I was only going to buy something for a short period of time, two years, three years, four years, I wouldn't buy my dream home. I would buy something that's not at the high end of the market, something that's affordable, relatively affordable in this marketplace, and make sure that you're not buying the most expensive house in the neighborhood um, because you know that you might sell it. If you're going to live there for 10 or 15 years, it might be, it does not matter. I mean, if you look in Newton as an example, Cindy, in the last 31 years, the market has steadily steadily increased. I mean, there's been five or six years where it's declined. The median sale price has declined. When was that? Uh, it was in 2007. It went down by 6 or 7%. And I didn't get hurt at all. In 1991, it went down by 7%. But in 25 of those 31 years, the median price of homes in Massachusetts and in Newton have gone up. So it's a long-term investment. If you're going to live there... Uh, and treat it as and an we, investment. And we have pocket areas like that across Massachusetts. Right. And by the way, the, most of the states do have pocket areas yeah. that we call Newton and Brookline. I was just very lucky. I was 23 and I was young and dumb, but I had just had Samantha. Mm-hmm. And I decided I was going to make my career in Newton and Brookline only for the fact that I didn't want to be far away from her. Right. The best decision of my life because I never went down. Right. I never tanked as a builder. Oh, in 30 so years. That, does that mean I get a percentage of everything you've done the last thirty years? <laughs> yeah, when me? I die, you get that was, it all. That was that was all me. When I'm dead, me? yes, it is the truth because I didn't jump around. I wanted to be closer to you. Mm-hmm. Okay, my next question: Do you see any indications of anything coming our way that's going to right hook us? Well, I have a question before you say that. You guys all say that we're not in a bubble, but there's mortgage brokers calling me every day telling me they'll write anybody with any credit. It doesn't matter, and they'll make it happen. To me, that sounds like we're starting a, bu- a bubble is going to break. That's true. She does get she gets these calls. Yeah, I, th- I suspect those are sales calls. Being able to actually underwrite those and get those approved might be a different thing. Right. I, Andy, it's, she just I've wrote, them. She just underwrote a really bad what we call us C a credit <laughs> we, call, we just call you yes this is which is the word we use on the note show it's called yeah. your step buddy okay but we're going to get you done but you're going to pay a high interest rate right so i see what she's seeing that okay, that does so still exist. again that's a so they're getting compensated in theory for the risk because there's a higher interest rate correct so again that's not something that happened but in 2007 it, anybody was getting a preferred rate no matter how what they qualified but here's, here's my question why put a person in a position oh, and charge sure. them so much more interest that they're going to end up going down and losing it anyways because right. they can't keep up with the interest rate? Shouldn't do it. Well, but but they want it. But they want and it. And if they can get it somewhere, they're going to go get it. Okay. And that's what's happened before. We're okay. going to get the, back to the, the idea about being a portfolio lender where we hold all – every loan we originate, we hold on our books. Right. We don't sell it off. So it's our invested interest – to make sure that we're putting somebody in a position where they can succeed, okay. that they can afford the mortgage or the house that they're buying. It doesn't do them any good. It doesn't do us any good either. Do you guys see another crash coming? Again, I think it depends on what marketplace you're talking about, Cindy. Okay, I'm and talking right here in Boston. I, I'm not an economist, um, but I would say 
He doesn't you, want to put his foot in his mouth right if now. I, if I, <laughs> if okay. I use the Andy Franklin uh, commuter index as a, as a gauge, <laughs> yeah. the traffic's just getting worse. I mean, it's taking me longer to get to work every day. Okay. The, the job market's strong. We, we, at the bank, we have trouble finding people. I'm going to step over people. you on this one. So <laughs> I've been doing this for 30 years, and I believe cycles, and I believe history repeats Definitely. itself, yes. okay? We're seven years on, seven years off, seven years on. I don't care who the president is. I don't care. It's never affected it. It just cycles. It has to cycle. You got to get rid of the old and bring in the new. Right. Okay. So I'm going to make, I've been saying this for a year now. I say second quarter 2019 going into 2020, you're going to, we're going to, the country's going to feel a slowdown. Now, if interest rates can stay down, that might help the rest of the country. Yeah. You're right when you say Boston's still strong. But look, I'm going down the Fenway area. Those, those units aren't moving so fast. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, the back bay has got hurt by the seaport area. But yes, sales are up and high. I still say between 2019, end of 2019, second to end, going to 2020. That's my prediction. I could be wrong. I also have to say that the consumer's getting smarter. They're not just buying to buy. You know, they are letting properties that they like sit on the market and waiting for them to be at a price where they want to make an offer. They won't make an insulting offer. that, That is true. Right now, people are not writing offers on their hoods of their cars again because right. that was happening again yes okay. I, don't, I don't think there's but i blame many. but i blame brokers for that you know they don't want to play the game fear highest and best highest and best you, hey right. hey guys girls ladies men did you forget when you're making no money six seven years ago let's stop playing this game right but that's the way they play the game which causes a frenzy which causes people to buy and not even have a, a second to think about it but that's another story for another day <laughs> i care about banking Tell me, Denise, did you guide your daughter in a two-year, a three-year, a five-year arm, or you wanted her to take a 15, a 30, like our parents did? Um, I guided her in a 30-year fixed because of where rates are. And why is that? Because when I got my first mortgage, it was 11.5% adjustable rate mortgage. So 4.5% seems really good. So if rates do tend to go up, I think she'll be safe long-term. Okay, so if you know you're going into a house long-term, write the 30, write the 15, Right. right? Yeah. Right. If she, if this was a starter home that she was only going to be there short term, I absolutely would have had her do the arm. You'd have to do the arm. Yes. Because to take be, advantage of the lower payment for that period of time, knowing that she was going to possibly. I, have, I move. do have a question. Let's say you do the arm. If you want to make principal payments on your mortgage, mm-hmm. you can still do that, can't yes. you? Yes. Yes. So you can work it both ways. Yep. Absolutely. Where well, you're only on the hook for this amount of money, but if you want to make. How many ex- how many additional payments would pay down some principal? Um, you can pay as, as frequently as you want. I mean, in terms of reducing the total amortization. Or right. Let's say somebody took a three year or five year, and they decided because they could afford that amount for their mortgage. Mm-hmm. And by the way, if rates go up, people aren't going to be able to afford their mortgages that they wrote. And by the way, the people that wrote the twos, the threes, the fives are going to go up now, and will they be able to sustain right. if they keep going up? Well, so I got two questions there. Right. One, you're locked into 30 years. Now you know your numbers, and that's it. Now just keep working and make money, honey. So you say to your daughter, mm-hmm. when you're in a three or five year, and then interest rates go up, what if they can't afford it anymore? What happens? They can't afford their property. Okay, so they qualify because interest rates were at two point something. Right. Now let's say they go to four point something. Well, Again, so but when we underwrite them, we underwrite them at a fully indexed rate. Oh, you do? Yes, okay, we do. Okay, explain that. So that means that even though the initial rate is 2.875, we qualify them at 4.875. Oh, okay. So that we make sure that there's cushion in their ability to repay when that loan adjusts. Got it. And okay. Now the other thing is when the, if the economy continues to go along well, then presumably in five years when that rate adjusts, they're making more money too, Cindy. So right. the rate, the payment's going to go up, but hopefully they're, they're also, they've had steadily uh, higher income. Does the every bank years. do that or just you guys? Most, uh, any of your secondary market lenders and banks will do it now because it's part of the regulations that we have to comply with as well, but it's something that we do as, as sound underwriting. Okay, yeah. where do we think interest rates are going before the year end? Uh, we just had an asset liability meeting um, <laughs> in the bank, and we have an expert. Uh, who, he, another quarter point increase uh, in September when the Federal Reserve meets, and probably another quarter point increase by the end of the year, and then a couple more next year is his prediction. So by the end of the year, we'll be at how much for, let's say, a 15? 
Yeah, so they're or 30. Yeah, the, your mortgage, I'm sorry. Five percent, possibly. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll let you guys five. think about that one. <laughs> I'm Cindy Stemple, and this is Tough as Nails on WBZ News Radio 1030, and we'll be right back. I'm Cindy Stampo on WBZ News Radio 1030, and I hate when they hit me in the back like that to get going. I'm here with Sammy, Andy, and Denise Leonard from Village Bank, Andy Franklin from Village Bank. Okay, we left off on interest rates. Go ahead, Andy. So we were just saying that if uh, the interest rates are probably going to go up, that's what most people are predicting. But I think one of the key elements in terms of the housing market and whether we're in a bubble or not is how rapidly the in- interest rates increase. So if we can have a steady, slow rise in interest rates, then that's going to have less of an impact on, on the uh, housing market. Because okay, can I stop you right there yep. for one second? We did that back around 10 or 11 when it started to rise again, and they pulled it right back. Do you remember that? Yep. So yep. they started to move them slowly, and they saw that was a problem, and they pulled them back. Yeah. Why so, was that? And um, how do you know they won't do that again? Yeah, I don't know that for sure. Again, that's if you could predict where the interest rates were going to go. We could all make a lot more money doing that than being a banker. But uh, That's true. <laughs> okay, so you're feeling our, your feelings so were. So if the rates go up, as Denise said, the, the, some of the bar, uh, ability to uh, borrow a loan depends on what the interest rates are. Because right. obviously the interest rates are higher it's a lower payment that you're going to be able to afford and means a lower house you can afford. So if we have just a gradual increase in the rates, uh, people's incomes are still going up. We have good, strong job market. It's not going to have that um, boom and bust feel in the real estate market. If we have an interest rate shock and they mean a shock that interest rates, something happens internationally or uh, interest rates go up 50, a hundred basis points overnight. That's a big problem. Can it, that happen? That can happen. Can it doesn't happen often, um, so that's an issue, um, and you, that's hard to predict. That's kind of a black swan event, you know. It could be so. A, basically, banks are out there gambling too. Yes. Gambling. Correct? Yes. Because I mean, you're you're predicting the next five seven years of what's going to go down. Right. We and that's one of the reasons that we are very careful who we lend to. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we want to make okay. sure that. So, I have to promote Village Bank, and I really have to <laughs> look at. I have used two banks in my career of building, okay? And one was, I was with Dr. Lee, and he was, gave me my, my break in at 20, 23, 24 years old, and they end up with Village. And I don't, and no disrespect to big banks out there, but I don't like them, Andy. We're not, you and I talk about this all the time. I don't want to be a goldfish in a bank. Right. I want to be with a bank that I get customer service. I want to be with a bank that I see the same faces. Village Bank, I ever see a turnover. I mean, we have the same women in there working that have been working there for 30 years, some of them 25 years. 40. 40. (laughs) It's like they talk to you like everybody's family. Yes. And and me, I'm always calling for something. Hey, that check that cleared in 2015. Mary Jane, can you find it for me? She's like, I'm right on it, Cindy. (laughs) Where Big Bang goes, well, we got to get the micro tapes and uh, we'll get that to you in three weeks or maybe a month from now. Mm -hmm. I just like the security of a small bank. Why is that? Yes. And I don't run a small business. So why do people want to go put themselves out there in these big banks and not come to a village bank and do business with a village bank? Yeah, I think that's you hit on all the key points. Is It's, it's really our involvement uh, with our customers. It's personalized service, one-on-one. The village bank is um, we're a cooperative or mutual bank, which means we don't have stockholders. So we're not a publicly traded bank. We've been around 100 years in, in Newton and the surrounding communities in Wayland, and we're going to be around as an independent mutual bank. So we don't have to worry about uh, the quarterly stock earnings reports or worry about how much money we're making every quarter for stockholders. Our focus is really on the community and our customers and doing the best we can. And that is really factual because I'm going to give everybody and we'll cite everybody a great example. When the market was going down in 09, and I'm going to speak as a builder. Sure. These big banks didn't care about Mr. Finn and his wife and Mr. McCormick and his wife and his family. These banks said, foreclose on the builder, foreclose on them. Village and the smaller banks worked with their builders. There was no reason to take them down. 
there was no reason not to work with an end user that was behind two, three months on their mortgage. And I saw it firsthand. Now, you didn't have a lot of that. No. Okay, a very sm little, but it doesn't matter. It's how you handle that situation. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is a bank that cares. Right. Because, there, you know, there's this saying that when you don't need money, the bank is there. <laughs> and when you need money, the banks aren't there. <laughs> right? It's been right. a saying forever. Yep. And a lot of people compare bankers to used car salesmen. You ever hear that running yeah, joke? Yeah. Okay. But that is not true at your bank. No. I pick up the phone. I call Andy. I call anybody over there. And they walk me through, through steps I need to be walked through. Or this is what I need done. And, I, again, we have a 20-year relationship that, that's, that's, you know, that is built. Right. But anybody out there, young, Samantha's age, should be coming to a village bank and building that same relationship that I have built. And Sammy's doing that with you guys, right? You know, and she's sending her clients to you guys. But I'm I, here. I am. I'm promoting Village Bank for a reason. You don't use somebody for twenty years and not respect them. Right. And I think if you're looking to do a mortgage, you're looking to do a construction loan because you're building a home. I think if you're looking as a builder, that they need to come in and speak to Village Bank. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I I, I sound like oh I'm no. I sound like a commercial, <laughs> but that is the truth because I've never once. Everybody I've referred to Village, which is all my clients, and everybody's had a great experience. Mm -hmm. So it, it I, I'm sorry, people. You need to listen out there and not just walk into those big banks and just be a big number. And when somebody gets back to you, they get back to you. Well, I, I think one of the you, things you, you highlighted, uh, Cindy, was when the market turned, a lot of the larger banks made a decision in Charlotte or New York City that we n we're not doing any more construction Hold on, loans. Andy's going to be a little bit more articulate than I was in that one. Go ahead, make the delivery, Andy. Go ahead. Okay, because I'm Cindy Stump. I'm tough as nails, okay? I make delivery one way, okay? My way. Now take it over. But the decision was made because the uh, large bank's not connected to the community like we are. There's a lot of good community banks, not just the Village Bank. And they made a decision, no more construction lending, no more uh, retail strip malls, no more mortgages, th these type. But when we're the a village bank um, that's tied to the community, we're invested in the community. That's not something that we're going to do. So that's why we're able to stay with our customers and continue to lend right, uh, right through the, the last crash. Well, you care about the ripple effect. Because when you talk about when it affects even like appraisers, they're small mom and pop shops most of the time. So when you start to pull back and not lend, it, it has a ripple effect into the community that they don't see for... I don't know, years to come. So would you say that old-fashioned banking is what you guys do? Yes. Definitely. Okay. Absolutely. Like my dad had, I, and, mm -hmm. I, and I have a real fast story, and I have a second to tell it. My father had, you know, he was just starting out. He was in his 20s. He walked down to a bank called Patriot Bank in Coolidge Corner, and this guy, Ray Manis, ran that bank back in the day, and he literally said to my father, I don't know you, but I'm going to lend you the money on that building in Coolidge Corner because I like you. <laughs> I like you, kid. Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore, but it does. It does if you get into that right situation where you can sit down, have a conversation, and maybe like M Dr. Lee did with me, right. he sat down with me at 23 years old and said, you're going to be successful. You're going to be big one day. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right now I just need to borrow money so I can do this next loan. But he saw something in my personality and took me under his wing. And then he brought me over to you guys sure. when he sold his bank, Liberty Bank and Trust on Milk Street. So, yes, I do promote Village Bank because I just love everybody in there and they're very good to me. And um, if I probably couldn't pay my bills for two, three months, they'd probably stick behind <laughs> me and help me out, okay? Definitely would, Cindy. Yes. But again, we're talking about interest rates and we're talking about, what about home equity? What, what do you feel about that? Talk to me about home equity. Well, I think it's with the Is values. Is it a good time to get home equity? Yes, because you want, to, you want to take advantage of the fact that you've probably got more equity in your house at this point in time. When you take out a home equity line, you don't necessarily have to utilize it. So you're not paying on it, but you have it there as a safety net. And if you have a low interest rate right now on your first mortgage and you don't want to refinance that first mortgage, maybe you have a fixed rate of 4% for 30 years on your first and you don't want to refinance to get cash out, a home equity line it could be a good alternative. Okay, can you explain? Some people don't even know what a home equity line okay. is. So let's go backwards. What is a home equity line? It's a second mortgage, right. generally, mm -hmm. if you have a first mortgage, that you um, are able to tap into the equity. So say your house is worth 800000 and you you owe 400000 on your first. You can take out another 200000 Half of? Half of up to 80% So there's generally, a math equation. Right. 
and then you can have that you can take that equity out you can hold it it's a line of credit that you can draw against and then you pay it back and as you pay it back you can redraw the same amount of money that you've already borrowed so if you have two hundred thousand it's some point you may only use ten thousand but they'll have a checking account with this line of credit right and use it maybe to fix up their home use it to yep. send their kids to college yes and the interest rates tend to be lower on a equity on yeah, a line they're generally tied to prime but there's the risk though it is it's a variable rate so right. that rate so can adjust rate. when the prime okay. rate adjusts hold that thought again i'm Cindy stumple and this <laughs> is tough as nails on wbz news radio 10 30 we'll be right back And I'm Cindy Stumpo on WBZ News Radio 1030. And again, I'm here with Samantha, Andrew Franklin, and Denise Leonard. Love that name. Let's go. We got calls coming in? Yeah. Moses, you on the line? Hello. Hello. Hi, Moses. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I like your name. Nice name. Um, she can pronounce it. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Cindy, I've been a builder for 10 years, and I don't miss an episode. My wife says, geez, you can just listen to the podcast show later. But I say, no, I have to listen to it live. Well, thank you. I appreciate um, that. So my question is, Andy, who do I get in touch with at your bank? I'm not nearly as big as Cindy, but I have my own building business. Could I get a name and contact information? Sure. You can uh, call Dave Penny Baker at the Village Bank, and uh, he'd be happy to talk to you. And does he, Andy, I mean, does this, what's his name, Penny Poopy? Dave. I don't know, <laughs> I, I know their number. That's a perfect name for a banker, what Penny Baker. Penny Banker. Baker. Penny Baker. Penny Baker. Okay, and his number? 617-340-1211. Okay, hold on, Moses, we're going to give you a main number, okay? Go ahead, say 617-340-1211. Did you get that, buddy? Yeah, I got it, thank you. And listen, Moses, Hello? Hello. Hello. How old are you? Uh, I'm 30. Oh, God. you got plenty of years. I'm 54. Dude, i got how many years on you? You'll be bigger than me, trust me. <laughs> and you'll do it a lot longer than me. So good luck to right. you and give, give you, Village Cindy. Bank a call. You're welcome. All right. Yeah. Judy? Judy? Hi. Hello? Hi, hi Judy. This is Cindy, Samantha, Andy, and Denise. Hey, how are you? The Brady Bunch is here. <laughs> We're good. And how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much, Cindy, for having me on your show. And, um, yeah, so my question is for the executives, whoever can answer this. So I'm in the energy deregulation world business, and I'm always looking at different rates and, you know, the, the rising and um, going down of the rates. Um, so where do you think interest rates could go before the year end? Um we're just so concerned. We're not finding a home so easy, and we've been looking for about a year now. Um, do you think the rates are going to be moving up? Well, we we were talking about this earlier, and you might have missed that that episode. That uh, what do we call it? Segment. Segment. That segment. Thank you. God, you guys know my business now here, <laughs> uh, and you might have missed that. But I'm still trying to get the bite line here too. Again, where do we think we can't really? Th- I, I would be. Uh uh, kind of uh, remiss if I try to predict where the rates are going to be. It's just uh, very difficult to say. I think they're going to trend up, but it's hard to tell. Okay, could they go up 1% in the next two months? Not mortgage rates. I wouldn't expect no. mortgage rates to go up that high, no. Okay. No. We're talking about slight increases of eighth to a quarter point. Okay, so if you start adding, we said maybe two more quarters before the year end? But again, that's a separate, that's kind of what... Uh, impacts the prime rate but in terms of the mortgage rates the mortgage rates have a lot to do with the the bond market and so it's it's much more difficult to predict uh, where the mortgage rates are going to go but I think if you're looking now uh, historically as Denise mentioned historically rates are really low right now for a fixed rate and even if they go up a quarter point between now and year year end you're still going to be able to lock in at a very good 30-year fixed rate if you're below five percent Around five percent for a thirty-year fixed—that's historically well, phenomenal. I, 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 you know, I, I understand where she's coming from because I've got clients that say the same thing. I can't find anything to buy, Cindy. I can't find anything for you to tear down. And by the time we do this, and by the time you build something, we're a year out, a year and a half out. 
and where will interest rates be then? And I'm out here, and I'm going to pay top dollar, and I might be paying top dollar by the time the house is done for interest rates. How do you answer those questions? She's, she's saying she's pretty much frustrated because they can't find something, and they want to buy something like everybody else because interest rates are low, correct? That's what's fueling the market. Correct, and there's the supplies down, and there's just still strong demand. So, I mean, Denise just went through this, looking for a house for her daughter. Uh, it was Harding. Yes. I, I, I'm sorry, Judy. Judy. Yeah. Are you close to finding something, or are you at this point of your um, emotional roller coaster ride that you're just going to settle on something that you really don't love? Which I see a lot of people doing this settling. They're going. Well, I did. I did that with my car, so I don't want to re repeat the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you sit with your car. Well, I would not do that with a home. Here's my take. I, I, I don't really care where the interest rates are going to go by the end of the year. you got to find something that you really love. And when you walk in that home, you know that's going to be a place for you and your family for a very long time. I don't think, personally, interest rates are going to go crazy. And I don't think you should buy something that you like. I think if you're going to spend most of your money on your biggest investment in your life is your home, you should love it. You should be happy to come home okay. and love your home because of, you know, that's where your money's going and, and that's the biggest investment in your life. So I think you can relax with the interest rates. And by the way, I think, you know, and we don't get into politics on my show, but I did read somewhere that Trump is trying to hold the Federal Reserve back from raising interest rates. Am I, am I hearing that correctly? Has anybody heard that? Yeah, they're in theory, the Federal Reserve is independent of the, the president. Right, so, so I can't see that really happening, right? <laughs> see what happens. But we can always, you can always try. But we don't talk politics. But no, really, keep looking, um, and you will find something that you love. And, you know, just be emotional on this one. How's that? Be emotional. When I always say don't be emotional when you're buying a home, be emotional. Don't just settle. Thank you. Okay? Have a great night. Thank you. All right, so I'm not going to take any more callers tonight because I don't want to take callers. I want people to understand, Andy, simplify to people what all these rates mean long term. What's going out here in the marketplace? What does Village Bank fear could happen? Right. How's that question? That's good. Um, again, I think it depends on whether you are buying to hold something or you're a, a flipper. I know you love the, the flippers. Um, yeah, so that, if you, that, again, well, you want, yeah, okay, yeah, a flippers, <laughs> pancakes, and dolphins, but okay, I know. But if you're someone that's just buying a, on speculation um, and you're trying to buy now in the hope that you can just turn and flip it or sell it quickly for a profit, that's where you have some risk. You okay, have, hold, again, you're saying this. Now, this is exactly what happened down on our last crash. You went down Florida, housewives, doctors, lawyers, janitors, teachers were buying condos down there yes. and flipping the purchase and sale paper right. and making money. Yes. Meanwhile, fast forward, four years later, they're running out of buildings chasing you. Hey, lady, <laughs> want to buy my unit? Because right. I, I was one of the people in there going in. And, and after the fact, when the market was dropping, just to get educated down south, and you're going to take these flippers, these people try to make a fast buck real fast, and some of them are doing it. But eventually, it's going to be like that game where the kids are running around, and there's five kids in four seats. Right. And then there's four kids in three seats. And it's going to be a problem. Yes. I could be wrong, but, yeah. but I think the advice itself. you just gave the caller is, a, is good advice. You're buying your, if you're buying your house, minor changes in the interest rate aren't going to impact you know, your long-term financial position in terms of finding something you love. Um, and I don't think you can worry about whether rates are going to go up a quarter point or an eighth of a point, um, and you're going to own that house, whether the value of the house is going to go up or down. If you're in there for the long long term, the, the houses historically in Massachusetts, as I cited earlier, are going to keep climbing up. doesn't mean they're going to go up 30 percent and you're going to make a killing. Andy, from 2012 to 2018, let's use Newton as an example. Tell me where the how much we've gone from 2012 to 2018 percentage wise. Yeah, so for the median home price in Newton, the the values have gone up almost 42 or three percent. Okay. So house values have gone from 780 roughly to 1 million 159. Okay. In that period. 42 percent, guys. When is the last time we went 42 percent? Do we have that information? 
Probably right before the last crash. We did that. Well, I don't, um, okay, so there we go. History. So it's up 42% in less than how many years? Seven. That's scary. Mm. Why didn't I buy everything? <laughs> I'm a builder. Oh, yeah, because Andy says Cindy's conservative. Yes, I am conservative. But when this, I, I see a blow up coming. I'm sorry, you, right. you, you give me numbers, 42%. We're all going to go to the moon when this one blows up, okay? We're all going to be done. You but then the that, downside, right? I think the key, too, is is making sure that those crests and valleys are not too drastic. So you're going to have booms and you're going to have busts. And if that bust dropped like in Newton again, the bust was a 7% drop. It wasn't like it was Vegas or Miami. Hold that thought. We're going to break. I'm <laughs> Cindy Stumpo, and this is Tough as Nails on WBZ News Radio 1030. on WBZ News Radio 1030. And we're here with Samantha and Andrew Franklin and Denise Leonard. Where did we leave off, Ann? Uh, we were talking about the booms and busts. Go ahead. So um, fortunately in Massachusetts, we've been able to avoid the big busts like some of the other cities. Um, knock knock on, wood. on wood, right? I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> right. Um, but in, if you look again, in, in Massachusetts, the, the largest drop in prices in the last 30 years was right after the last... Uh, recession 2008 it was 11% drop uh, in the median home price which isn't insignificant but when you compare it to some other cities throughout the country you know whether it's Las Vegas or Miami or that had drops of 30 40 50 yeah. percent that's a bust that's a bust. so Massachusetts has been very fortunate in the last 30 years it's been a steady increase with slow plateaus or slow uh, depressions so my advice, again, yes, prices seem to be very high. The but market seems buy. very strong. But if you're going to buy a house to live in, just take the plunge and, and, and go it. for it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because the next 10, 15 if, years, if it's, The bust is years. probably going to be, if it's going to bust, it's going to be a low to, a low drop. And if you're going to live there anyways, it doesn't matter. And a healthy market real fast. Have we ever seen one lately in the last 20 years? Has there been a healthy market? Because I, I haven't so. seen one <laughs> since 1989. I have not seen a healthy market. A healthy market to me is when, like, you know, builders took a year to build. A, they knew that it was going to take a year to sell a house. But mm-hmm. those days don't exist anymore. But that's the way I started in 1989. And sometimes, guys, the more you know in this business, the, the more afraid you are to do things and you get older. Anyways, and I'd like to thank Andy Franklin and Denise Leonard from Village Bank. Thanks, guys, for coming yeah. in. And thank you for giving our listeners a lot of knowledge on interest rates and where the market's going or where we think the market's going. Samantha Stumpo. I love you. Love and you I love too. having you. You're my co-host. You're my best friend, and you're my daughter. So, anyways, everybody, this is Cindy Stumpo from WBZ News Radio 1030. Have a great, safe weekend. See you next week. <laughs>